Mari and Tor Krecken are known to the world at large as Darling West, a Spellman award-winning folk music duo from Oslo, Norway. They have striking musical talent, writing soaring love songs of bittersweet power and heart-tugging lyrics. Their music is an amazing twist on Americana and bluegrass. An intensely personal and private couple, I was elated to be able to collect their thoughts on life and music for this special edition of my show. And that's because, well, we're friends in real life. Every week, Mari and Tor share bits and pieces of their lives on their website and YouTube channels, writing new songs and inviting special guests to share their love of melody and poetry. They are as lovely and calming as their image. There are no lies. Nothing is hidden. These are just real people playing heartfelt and insightful music for you, their audience. It is my greatest pleasure and honor to welcome them to my show, the Rockstar Superhero Podcast. So sit back by your fireplace, close your eyes, and dream. This is Darling West. jump right in because this is a conversation and the nice part about something like this is it's a conversation between friends yes you know it's just um, what we need right now that's i agree on my side as well it's it's so pleasurable to have something peaceful that there's no real agenda it's just about reconnecting with people even if they're on the other side of the world yeah bless the internet right Yes, yes. So instead of doing some of the obvious things, I wanted to ask you a real simple question, which how did you two get together? Before we talk about Darling West, how did you two end up stumbling across each other? Uh, yeah, it's a cute story, actually, because I was um, hanging out with a friend of mine. Her name is Maria Solheim, and she's an artist uh, and tour played bass in her band. And I didn't do any music back then. The two of us, Maria and I, uh, sat making uh, homemade merch for her tours. And uh, then I came along on one of her tours in Germany uh, to sell merch. Wow. And, be, and be, I guess, her support. Mental support. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's where the magic happened. Just, yeah. uh, I had my eye on tour because um, I knew him as Maria's bass player uh, yeah. before that. Uh, so I kind of spent those three weeks reeling him in. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. So our relationship started on tour. So, and it is, that's how we live our life right now. Also, yeah. Well, not right now, yeah. obviously, yeah. but yeah. in normal circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, it continues anyway. I, you know, the funny thing is, Tor may remember this, but I have a sort of man crush on him as well. Uh, <laughs> because I mean, half of Norway do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're not alone. laughs> well, you know, when he came to the States when he was playing bass with Shining. Mm -hmm. um, he was sitting in the back, this tiny, poor, poor tour, this tiny club, and he's sitting in the back on his laptop and being completely left alone, by the way. And then w Rob Jones, resident super fan, decides to run up because I recognize him immediately and I just start doing the whole we're not worthy thing and, and thank you. And it was so cute because he was so gracious and really uh in love with the idea of making people happy and i remember him just you you put your hands together tora and you and you bowed a little like oh no no really it's okay but thank you yeah. and and it was just really lovely and simple and the thing that i discovered when i you know when we saw you a year and a half ago when we you know at that club in seattle we we got to see you and talk to you for a bit. And it was just such a genuine and lovely experience. And um, I think your energy as a duo, as a couple and as performers just precedes you. It's such a beautiful and simple thing. And your music is so perfectly suited for who you are, if that makes sense. 
Oh, it's really nice of you to say. Yeah. And it's really yeah. fun to hear you kind of summing up the essence of tour, because that's exactly how he is as a person and also in his music. Um, just in general, here in Norway, he's one of the best bass players around, and he's still very uh, humble and always willing to uh, take on do lessons and he's so interested in uh, giving uh, young musicians what he has felt that he's yeah he's just he's just like you 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 um, summed up there but yeah. as for me also I came into music very late I didn't even play an instrument like I said I was selling merch when we met uh, so everything I've learned and how we uh, ended up in this band is just like he's been my musical mentor mm. <laughs> and he's very gracious with my uh i don't know my uh outbursts and i I've, I've had a lot of i'm a very emotional person <laughs> and yeah. it's hard for me not to um accomplish uh what I want, like uh, musically, uh, oh, I feel it's been a long time since we've been speaking. <laughs> I know, my, uh, my apologies, <laughs> I wish I could speak Norwegian. <laughs> no, but um, it's, it's been a, it's been a lot for me to learn in a short amount of time. I didn't start playing when I was a kid and being a grown up starting playing, it's harder because you know how it's, supposed to sound and you can't really make it happen right for uh, just at once so it's been a very emotional ride and he's been by my side all, <laughs> all along yeah. trying to balance it and yeah so um the this band is very i think um uh it's what this band is about uh grace I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's a beautiful way to put it. It, I first of all, I didn't know that you hadn't been playing that long because you're really exceptional. Oh, I mean, thank you. Well, and really and tour cool. nods, yes, <laughs> yes, that's incredible. It's really something. Well, first of all, you have, I mean, a beautiful, beautiful lilting voice. You have a a, a unique uh, stamp uh, in that space because your vibrato. And everything is very clearly unique to you. And when you hear certain pieces, especially, there's there's obviously some types of music that stand out more than others. But <clears throat> excuse me, when you're playing basically love songs or the kind of music you do, that's sort of a celebration of life and nature and love and all of these things that are sort of uncomplex. Um, the, the way you do it as a duo and as each other, just singular, is really um, special. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be too flowery, but uh, <laughs> oh, it's, thank you. it's beautiful. I think it's a, um, a very, um, the, the two worlds that's, that has clashed here is also Kind of the essence of uh, Darling West because I have um, a lot of intuition and I work and write songs uh, on intuition because I mm -hmm. always loved music but I haven't played for that long and then Tor brings out his brings in his uh, technical abilities so that's like the meeting point there yeah. I think is uh, what makes it happen because uh, you can't, it's not always that interesting listening to um, good technique, I guess. There's a lot of really uh, talented or uh, well-educated musicians around, but you also have to just find something intuitive uh, that you want to, uh, yeah, formidla. Uh, convey. Convey, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm talking 
No, you no, can do no, that's fine. No. Now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. But this is also how I prefer it. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm not much of a talker. I'm more of a, I like to listen to people talk. But, I'm yeah. not. but, but that's also a point here uh, in, in how we work. I'm definitely the talker in any situation. I talk a lot also in the car when we're traveling. I talk all the time and he's just listening. And... Uh, but whenever he sits down writing lyrics, it just flows out of him. He's mm. doing most of the lyrics and he never talks. But when writing lyrics, there's a lot <laughs> to learn about yeah. what's going on inside here. <laughs> oh, well, no, I believe that. You know, you know, I when you were just speaking now, Mari, it made me think of how music either connects with you mentioned technical, how it connects with the brain or how it connects with the heart. And as sort of simplistic as that is, I think what makes beautiful music like yours work so well is that it does connect with the heart. Sure, there's, a, there's these technical things that a musician like myself or Tor or whomever hears and they say, oh, wow, that was a nice... Uh, chord change or a great inversion or wow what a lovely bridge or something like that but it's it's the intangible pieces of the music that actually make you go you know that make you gasp you know you have that song um hey there right that kills me Aww. it it does when you played it here in seattle i don't know if you could see me out standing there but i was just like just tears and and i will tell you that normally i listen to bands like shining i listen to a lot of very intense very heavy almost you know super pissed off angry music and and to have that lovely simple but complex harmony the the way the melody moves in and out the 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 gentleness of the chorus just breaks me and Aww. i wouldn't want it any other way i mean tomoko she couldn't stop talking about it the whole drive home it was wonderful oh that's wonderful to hear i think yeah. actually that show was probably one of the first times we play that song mm. because be. uh, we hadn't recorded it yet yeah back then. Yeah, you had said that at the show. You said this is coming up, but we haven't even done this yet. This is a new piece. Yeah. And and then when you left and you went back home, you went out into the woods and yeah. you did that version out in the woods. And my wife said, that's the song. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a perfect example of what I was uh, talking about, actually, because that's very intuitive. Uh, that, that was my song yeah mm -hmm. uh and uh and that's yeah it's nothing technical about it it's just something that uh came to me while i was yeah. w washing dishes in the kitchen <laughs> um. and it, yeah it's just different ways how a song comes to life and that way is my favorite way of yeah. writing that it just comes to you in a total different situation than sitting down and trying to write something yeah but uh also you brought up shining i'm curious about your um way into music because that is definitely an example of uh technical abilities yes. shown on stage yes that <laughs> and is it's a just show like a, you're just uh amazed by what they can do Right, yeah. but yeah. there's also a, um, a, there's also some. What is it in that music that touches you? You think uh, besides the technical? Oh well. Show off. <laughs> oh, so, so this is interesting. I've never had somebody turn turn the questions around on me. <laughs> I'm so um, curious about a lot of things, but I feel like you have to be the one that. Yeah, well, I've been playing drums since I was four years old. So I, I'm one of those people, right, that was really entranced by what I would call difficult music. I, I yes. caught up in the, the notes and the technical aspect. And it took me a long time to grow out of that and just embrace music at its simplest form. 
Um, so as a child, I was always pursuing progressive rock back in the 70s, you know, Rush and Kansas and, and that sort of thing, because there was a lot of notes. There was a lot to play. And as a drummer, the more notes, the better, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually discovered them because I was uh, deeply uh, entranced by Devin Townsend of all people. Um, and he had toured with Shining uh, back in, I want to say 2013 or 2012, maybe, or you guys, I should say, had toured with him. And uh, his guitar player had mentioned it, uh, said, I saw this band in Europe that just blew my mind. And I had, and so I went online and looked at it. And the first thing I found was the black jazz stuff. Oh, that's and, their, you know, their it's, best period. <laughs> I, I yeah. would agree. Um, I like, um, I mean, everything from Grindstone to 111, that's my, that's my jam. Whatever that is, that's my jam. I love the jazz. That's great. The, you know, the traditional uh, uh, swing jazz in the early days. And then I, I, I like the synth pop. And I understand why Jurgen is doing what he's doing because he's definitely a restless soul yeah. and is not interested in kowtowing to the world he's he's like this to the world at all times um but um that period yeah i i'm caught up in the notes and the music and the uh i think it's the ability to say like wow where does this come from yeah you know um because it isn't noise it is controlled chaos yes and and i remember i mean to be again i get it tori you're sitting right in front of me <laughs> and this is going to embarrass you a little, but truthfully, the first thing I had seen outside of one of the videos for uh, Fisheye was the performance at, uh, is it pronounced Ouya? Yeah. The, okay. And, and uh, Tor commanded the stage. It was, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it was Tor and, and <clears throat> Sagan, you know, and, and, you're going out front and it was just it was just so much power in that front line um and then the music of course so it was very entrancing and so for me i'm sorry for the long-winded answer but it's it's a combination of the energy and the technical experience but there's a but there's this sort of cool rock star dangerous element that came with it as well that I have never been able to produce. I mean, I could sit here and play 64th notes until I'm blue, but I've never been cool. And there is a cool factor to a band like that, that where everybody's handsome and, and they've all got black on and, <laughs> and, and there's this sort of musical violence on stage. It was really violent music and it's a turn on. It is. Yeah. I could I could see why why it happened. You know, for for you two. <laughs> yes. I you was know. Uh, amazed by tour in that uh band actually because it's very like you said humble and meek and uh, in most other um projects he likes to just be in the background i mean he's a bass player that's yeah. very typical for yes. bass players to just yeah. they they started out playing the guitar but didn't want to do the solos so they yeah. <laughs> ended up playing the bass <laughs> uh and he's definitely that kind of guy but in shiny he was just taking uh his job very seriously <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, and played along with a rock star image and yeah that's i was surprised <laughs> yeah by that. uh and it was fun yeah yeah you know i i do want to say this too to listeners who don't know who shining is it is not the swedish band it is mm -hmm. the norwegian band it's a Absolutely. much much different experience yes uh yeah. <laughs> significant. And was playing, uh yeah. when they did the they had the jazz uh, uh <clears throat> period mm, yeah it's kind of different now right these days yeah yeah, yeah it's but changed. i love that about uh, a band as well i mean uh jürgen uh the front guy he uh he just like you said he 
don't want to play along with what all what the audience wants. It just wants to move forward, mm -hmm. and that is his his choice. And, yes. uh, and we can relate that in our own music as well because we started out very old time uh, bluegrassy almost on right. our first record, and we grew an audience from that and uh over the the past years we've been really we've released four records there's been like oh why don't you just do acoustic things and and then on the latest record we we um explored a little bit more pop yeah. uh influences and uh we just love being uh flexible and love um just exploring other ways to do folk music. Yeah. And that doesn't always go down with the, the audience that you already found, but you still have to, it's not like there's a lot of money in music. So no. you have to make it count and have fun while doing it. Yeah. So uh, we still, yeah, so I can relate to that uh, feeling that Yudkin probably struggles with it. He just wants to do his thing and yeah. no one can, yeah, it's the musician's choice. And yeah. and that's fun to, I, I'm reading a book about the band these days. Uh -huh. There's a lot about Bob Dylan in there uh, and how Bob Dylan, especially and other musicians throughout the years kind of some of them are feeding on uh, Mutsdam. Oh yeah, resistance. The, the resistance oh. from, from people. He's like, oh, I want to provoke, uh, provoke mm -hmm. you. We're not like that at all. Sometimes I, I feel very hurt when people come uh, to the merch table after and say, I like it when you just do the acoustic things like yeah. did before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not like I want to provoke anyone, but we also want to keep moving in mm -hmm. our music and do uh, what feels right uh, there and then, then and there. I don't know what the expression is. Yeah. Oh, no, it's perfect. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's an um, interesting topic. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's lovely, Mari. Um, the, the thing that you talk about that so many people outside of, well, basically anybody who's not an artist, which I mean, there's a, I mean, if there are, you know, one in 10 people are an artist or two in 10, I don't know what the number is, but clearly artists are in the minority. Um, and there's this real hard well, it's impossible to know what anybody's thinking, really, because we only let people know what we're thinking sort of out loud, right? And and you're letting people know what you're thinking in your music, but you're also letting them see a snapshot of a period of your life. And that evolution is constant. You know, artists are always moving forward, or they're not really artists. I mean, that's the truth. They nobody wants to sit still, and and it and yet the other people who are not artists, they they find that snapshot and they say, "Oh, I I identify with that, and that is that is what draws me to the music. That is maybe maybe Mari's talking to me." in this song, it feels like she's talking to me. And so it becomes deeply personal. And it's interesting that you said how it hurts your feelings because I imagine the listener, they feel like their feelings are hurt because you've left them behind. Right. You've, you've gone on to a new world and what happened to the old one? What was wrong with that? Uh, that's such a great point, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I can, Feel, I can feel that you're talking about in yeah. other artists' journey, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So that's very well put. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we do. We talk about it sometimes that we there are artists that we love too that uh, suddenly decide to go a different way, 
and sometimes I'm disappointed <laughs> because yeah. I like what they used to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, but that's how it is. You, the artists, just have to follow their vision, and they will lose some people and then gain other ones. And I guess yeah. that's yeah. how it is. Yeah. But, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was changing the subject. But <laughs> <laughs> please, please go on. <laughs> just like Rob, get this over with. Get this. Over with. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a lot. Of no. I, I want to hear from you. I, I look, I really mean it. When we met you, when we actually had a chance to just sit down and talk face to face and just become friends, it was an immense experience and it was lovely and it was real. It wasn't a fan and band thing. It was, Not it was four people just having a chat and, and maybe someday some coffee, right? Yeah. And, yes. and we have missed you. We're just really in love with you as a couple. Um, but I, but so I don't keep fawning on you. Um, how, how did Darling West pop out of this new relationship? Well, we, at some point, well, I can't really, I don't know if I have the timeline right, but I guess we've you, been together for 15 years. Yeah. 15 years you've been together? Yeah. 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 That's insane. <laughs> so yeah. it's hard I love to it. keep track <laughs> of the timeline. Yeah. But please no, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. Did that, did that scare you that I switched to solo layout? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, want we want to see, see you. you. We don't want to see ourselves. Oh, man. I was like, okay, <laughs> fine. Well, what if, wait a minute. What if I want to drink some water and I don't want anybody to see Go ahead. We're drinking coffee all We're the drinking time. Coffee. So. I did that the other day to somebody, and they literally just stopped. Oh, and got really? super quiet, and they go, hello? 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 Because they thought the internet dropped off. So. Yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. I was just trying to produce, but whatever. That's fine. Uh, well, uh, yeah. So uh, we started. You you bought a mandolin, I guess. That was because I was already, as you know by now, the people that are listening. I was playing a lot, and uh, and you decided you wanted to learn the instrument, and we were both uh, really uh, fascinated by by bluegrass music mm -hmm. so so it was natural for you i guess to get a mandolin or that was something that felt yeah. okay to start with yeah I and guess. i wanted kind of wanted to join the fun with playing i guess yeah. uh, I, we've been we had been together for seven years maybe or five years yeah. mm. by then and i felt there was a lot of things in towards life that i was missing out on because mm -hmm. his life is very much about music. Um, and that was even when we got together, that was an issue. But mm. you were like, yeah, I really like you, but I love music. Yeah. <laughs> I love playing. I want to go uh, on the road and I'm going to be away a lot. And mm. that was kind of a topic. Yeah yeah not that i bought a mandolin and thought that i that we were gonna that i was gonna go on tour with you but i just wanted to like feel what it was like uh yeah. joining the fun with music mm. uh yeah so i started playing a little we tried out some fiddle tunes together and stuff and then at one point we wrote the song together while we were in a cabin in the mountains and it just really felt like a fun thing to continue with writing songs yeah and we had already been making those christmas albums right yeah that was uh that was a tradition hobby. you had before you met me even so we would just i had this like a track cassette recorder i was a bit slow on getting computers <laughs> so uh, so we would record cover songs four cover songs and then print them on the cd and mari would make a cover and would would give them to friends as a christmas present oh. so that's how we started i guess and then later on we decided to get a start a band after we started writing songs together and also, we performed in a few 
birthday parties and weddings and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and that, around that same time, I guess. At that point, uh, Tour was actually quite vocal about, I don't want to, uh, I really don't want to be in a husband and wife band. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's yeah. interesting. Oh, okay. Uh, so, but, should I? Yeah, talk please. Now? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I've been, you know, touring for probably 10 years at that point. And, you know, that was my dream being on tour in the US for a month, yeah. for instance, like when we met the first time I met you. And, yeah. And uh, so the idea of, because uh, you know it takes time to build a relationship and that's a lifelong thing i guess i mean uh, like a couple mm -hmm. a relationship and and uh, especially during those first few years it was i was skeptical about also sharing that part of my life because that was kind of my thing i would go on the road and it would, there's this incredible feeling of freedom for me mm -hmm. in doing that. So yes, it's two worlds colliding. I can understand that that is yeah. a a hard tr tr transition. Yeah. So, but I mean, now of course I would not have it any other way than we'll, the way we're doing it. But yeah, yeah. But I at that point I was I was really skeptical about it. So. Yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of phases yeah. uh, in this this project because there's that, and uh, also for for a few years while we were together, we would be a lot apart, and that was our way of living. And at some point, that felt uh, harder to bear, also. And yeah. then we found this project, and it kind of in a way it kind of saved mm. that problem as well because now we can spend a lot of time together <laughs> yeah. uh, and i think that was one of the things that you were a bit afraid of maybe that um you would spend too much time together but we also grown into uh, a life where that right now that is the absolute best way of yeah, living our both our musical and couple life. Yeah. We're we're a really good match on tour. Um, we have different uh, tasks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we we just fall into a good mm. role. Our roles are very. He is driving the car. I'm doing and talking to the promoters i'm doing gotcha. merch <laughs> it's a very it's a very well uh driven machinery yeah yeah <laughs> it makes sense though because you're both artists mm -hmm. you know i i think um people who aren't of course as we talked about a, a moment ago they don't understand what it feels like and the the need the need to to share your thoughts and your heart and your vision with others the the need to receive something back and you know um i i applaud you guys but i also know that because you have um you have love which is in, obviously probably the most vital part of what you do because it actually informs your music but you have you have the same sensibility so you understand what it takes and you understand the compulsion of being an artist and the need to sh and the, the absolute i can't not share this with someone even if only it's only one person right right you know i totally get that i'm so jealous of that <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you do any music right now you know, sadly, no, uh, I would love to be out there, but a part of me because of my, you know, my relationship with my wife, who, who is not an artist and my children and having these younger children, it's not a, I'm not, it's certainly not a blame game. I made these choices and I love my wife immensely. And I, I, I adore my children, all, no all doubt. of them. No doubt. Um, 
but I, it's also an understanding that um, I don't say I can't go back, but to do what you do is a dream for, but it's also something I can't imagine really doing much if ever. I, I, I do hope that someday that is allowed, I'm allowed to do that again. But I know right now, if I did, it would put so much at risk. It would simply be um, serving my needs and it would be over everything else. And, and I can't do that. I've done that in the past and I went through a divorce and um, an alienation with my kids because I, you know, to, uh, I, I, I shouldn't say my wife's name, I guess on the the podcast, but, 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 but my, you know, my wife, she, she's, you know, um, she's, uh, important to me. And, and, um, I learned the hard way the first time, and I don't want to do that to her or my children and, or to um, yourself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yet, and yet I, I will tell you that deep down inside, I, I long, I crave, um, I ache, um, and I'm bitter about it at times. And it's not her fault or the children's fault. It's strictly my choices. But I do at times feel as though I have made snap decisions um, that have lifelong consequences. Yeah. I mean, it's like that for everyone. And yeah. we talk a lot about these things i guess yeah. between the two of us too because we kind of decided not to have kids and mm -hmm. that's also something that we further down the line probably will regret at some, mm -hmm. in some periods of time mm -hmm. so it's just it's a balance you just have to go with go with the choices yeah made. yeah 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 ross valerie um, the bass player from Journey, uh, he has said many times how uh, he wishes he could have had, well, you know, an experience to be, you know, a, a man at home raising a family, but he chose this life. Yeah. And and yet it's so funny because the people at home wish they were a famous rock star. Yeah. They, they, nobody's really satisfied. It's an yeah. amazing thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's never been an optimal way of living. I think no. you just have to roll with the things you've got. And yeah, make yeah. Choices along the way. Um, yeah. because because of how we started and we talked about the fact that we don't want to go too long. Um, <laughs> yeah. The real the reality is is I want to talk to you forever because I really do deeply cherish our friendship. But I, I do want to ask one thing before you guys go. Um, and then I also want to point out one thing. So I have two things for you. Okay. Yes. Right. So the first question is, um, so you've released four albums and, you know, it was not too long ago that you were nominated uh, for, uh, is it, the, is it called the Spellman prize or something like this? I can't Perfect. remember how it's, yes. is that really? Okay. Yeah. And, and the, so the first one came and went. Uh, the second one came and you won. Yeah. And you were recently nominated for your third. Is that correct? That's right. So to Americans and to everybody else outside of Norway who does not know what this is, this is the equivalent of what we would call a Grammy here in the States. And it's the most, uh, the highest musical honor. And my friends here have won. And it, <laughs> it's, it's so beautiful that you of all people have won this so tell me what that experience was like so you know through the first one and what what it feels like now actually sort of feeling like maybe you've proven something i'll give you space oh but but yeah, yeah well, i can talk yeah please do. well for me it's uh, i'm always uh always in a state where i don't want to be um it's a very Norwegian thing, I guess. I don't don't want to be too excited. <laughs> right. It's like just keep it um, keep it in. It's not really that big. It's but uh, uh, over well after we won our first uh, prize, it, it built a lot of confidence to uh, 
to be acknowledged like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, so the the moment that we get nominated is of course a really exciting thing, but uh, it means even more uh, when the time has passed <laughs> a little while, I guess, because mm. uh, it builds confidence that, uh, in the fact that people think that we can write songs, which uh, sometimes I have to remind myself that I can do because every time yeah. we start a new album it's like well, how did I do this the last time yeah. and was it any good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you actually yeah. have something tangible to prove that I know how to do this just start the process <laughs> yeah. so that's something to lean on I guess when uh, the everyday uh, thoughts about not being good enough uh, mm. Mm. come seeping in. Yeah. So I think that that's the the main um, thing to me. Yeah. You know? mm. No, I agree. And also, uh, we talked about it briefly, but when we started the band it was it was a like a hobby thing it was we we didn't think we'd ever even release any albums when we started gotcha uh, almost and so when we came to that point on our second album that we actually won uh, spellman it uh, it felt like somehow we could accept that we are in fact artists and we have our own band and yeah we kind of, it was, so it was really yeah really nice thing. yeah yeah there's a validation that comes with that yeah, yeah. and oh. it's not like as artists you uh, you always talk about it's not really important if people like it uh the most important part is that we get to do it and Absolutely, that is true, but still, you kind of need validation <laughs> uh, sometimes to to get the courage to move on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to say thank you to everything you've been doing because, you know, over the last year with uh, the chaos and the the pandemic and the, the just the changes we're all forced to endure and sort of being stuck at home it's so wonderful to be able to experience your music on a weekly basis oh, yeah. and <laughs> something for people who aren't aware darling west does a friday uh online gig that is really really cool and really special and it's different every week and there are guests and it's just this lovely immense experience and I really, it, it's not a question, but I, I just wanted to comment on the fact that I love that you are bringing your feeling, your way of being, and you're sharing it with the world and you're giving it to them. And that is such an overwhelming joy to me because I, I look at artistry as a gift from heaven. It's this magical thing that none of us ask for, but it's built into us. And you two, it, you know, Mari explained it by saying, look, I just started playing a little while ago. And it's so natural and obvious from the beginning that this is what you should have always been doing. And I just wanted to say thank you for doing that for us because those moments are rare nowadays. This is a world that's lost in so much chaos and anger and dissonance and, and fear. And you bring sunshine to us once a week. It's just like a dose right when we need it. And, and I wanted you to know how much I personally appreciate it. And I want to make sure that people hear about this because I want them to join in on that celebration. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that, that Friday session uh, project has also been really good for us. Yeah. Because if we didn't have that, I think we would 
drawback and apathy in a different yeah. way than we yeah. have been. We've been learning a new song every week, setting up our gear and playing it uh, for the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's been really good for us as musicians to keep going and have a project that we need to continue yeah. and uh, also keep in touch with our audience. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. been, it's much more time consuming than we thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> A lot so of production as, requirements. Yeah. yeah. At some point, I think we have to focus on writing more songs and maybe song that thing out, but we're going to go on for a little while longer. Good, good. Well, so last question is, is basically that. What are you doing for the next phase of Darling West? What are you, because even though this is a conversation, I love the idea that this is also a promotion, that this, that this helps you and encourages people to listen to your work. So tell us what's coming. Well, we started uh, working on a new album. So, uh, and we have two amazing musicians that we, uh, that's our band here in Norway. So we're going to just, uh, get together with them and try out some ideas mm. relatively soon when we can. Yeah. And, uh, so that will be our main focus, I guess, this year. Absolutely. On new music, we yeah. tried a new routine, routine here uh, at home where we get up in the morning, do some yoga <laughs> and uh, get into the music room where we're right now uh, to write for a few hours before the day starts with all the logistics and emailing that that yeah. contains. Um, so we're definitely writing. That's our main goal to write as much as possible uh and then record but that is uh, but people are welcome to check out our latest record that is not that was released not that long ago yes <laughs> it was that's released true. in february last year so it was just uh yeah it was just when the whole thing started yeah. so it was hmm. a weird time to release anything yeah, yeah. But it it had a very uh, uh, positive title. It, it is called We'll Never Know Unless We Try. So I think there's some encouragement in there that people yeah. can appreciate in these times. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so because you said that, Mari, I have to now ask one tiny little last question. Yes, please do. And the, and the last question is what song represents you and your husband or ooh deeply that, personal question that is a very uh hard question to answer because it i guess it depends okay <laughs> uh and it changes but i feel like uh, hey there is a is definitely uh when i told you that I wrote it in the kitchen while I was doing dishes. It was just coming to me because I just was there thinking about how much I appreciate my life with yeah. tour. Yeah. So it's, I think for my part, I can say that that is the essence right now. Yeah, mm. I agree. Yeah. I love that. I love how simple that is, Tor. Just your that is correct. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I I really really treasure you both. I treasure our friendship. I treasure your music. I can't wait to see you in person again and spend yes. some time with you. Love and this. I do promise you that um, we are going to talk about how can we do um, one of those special intimate shows that. That, that we're going to talk about because yes. it's going to be real. I've already got a location and everything. Oh, um, I've been, I've actually been working on it. It's true. And um, uh, wow. you're, you're really, I mean, if, if it, if it can work with your schedule, obviously coming through the area. Um, and then of course, when the world is released to do these sorts of things um, where I have this set up is really, I mean, it's going to blow your mind. It's, wow. it's, I mean, it's really, 
cool and and we can even live stream. I mean, I'm telling you, you have no idea <laughs> how cool this is because well remember, I'm going to give you a little treat, a little inside right here and then I'm going to let you go. Remember when you were in town and we were talking a little bit about Twin Peaks? Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's one of the Twin Peaks locations. <gasps> wow. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We appreciate you so much. We're definitely this is going to happen. Yes. Yeah. We're going to make it happen and I'm yes. going to I'm going to put about 200 people in there and it's going to be golden and and we're going to laugh and have such a joyous night. So with that, bless you guys. We love you. Likewise, thank you, thank you so thank you much, Rob. You and I as one could never be.